Hi, this is Diane. You're currently watching the Just Keenan Around Show. And uh, with me is Dan Bennett. Hi, Dan. Do I call you Dan or Mr. Bennett? Oh, call me Dan. I can call you Dan. You could call me Swami, but. Swami. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So Dan is an amazing man. He's been on our show before. We made air cannons once before. And uh, you do glow-in-the-dark painting. So he's a guy of many talents. Used to work in the um, in Edmonton, Canada. Is that right? I yeah. remember you saying that yeah. before. I worked at the Edmonton Space Sciences Center. And I was a science inter interpreter and tour guide and uh, theater usher okay. for a star theater and an IMAX movie theater. Okay, and it, it like puts the uh, Pacific Science Center to shame, right? I mean, isn't it just this humongous science center? It is, it is. It's, uh, I don't it's mean to put massive... the Pacific Science Center oh, down, they're, but... They're, uh, they're kind of like, uh, it might be more like apples and oranges. The, oh, okay. The Edmonton Space Sciences Center focuses m more on the physics end of science. Oh, all right. As, uh, the Pacific Science Center is more the biology and archaeology. Okay, so just so, so yeah, yeah. they like one, They don't really compete. You're not Canadian, are you? Yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, you're Canadian? That's what you were doing up in Edmonton. I am, Oh, eh? my gosh, I've known you for years, and I know you're Canadian. <laughs> oh, half Canadian. The, you and Justin Bieber. Yeah. Mm, we'll have well, to talk about that later. the left half is Canadian. <laughs> and he's, okay. he's I'm, I'm nicer. <laughs> well, how about that? Well, anyway, Dan's here today. He's going to show us 3D star charts. Is that right? Absolutely. Is this something you learned in the Edmonton Science no, Center? No, no. Uh, I, when I was working there, I wanted to, I wanted, I couldn't find anything that showed me where the stars were in 3D. I found a couple of little diagrams and stuff like that but everything's I, flat yeah it's always flat you look yeah. out in the sky and it's like it's all flat yeah and i want to have a sense of the closest stars and where they were and see wow. if there was a pattern and see if you know see if there was like a stream of stars and then empty or you know sheets or layers or anything but wow so can you <laughs> do like the big dipper 3d yeah yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah. Because you do tend to think of them as all flat. You don't think of the yeah, dimension. Yeah, one is about uh, 70 light years away, and another one is about oh my 80 gosh. or 90, and the farthest one is, I think, 150, 160 wow. light years away. And they're, they're, these stars are very far away, and uh -huh. they're very big, and they're very bright. They're, uh, these stars back here that uh -huh. you can see, these are... Uh, stars come in different sizes and different colors. All right. And generally, the smaller they are, the redder they are. And the, oh, I feel like I should be taking notes. The smaller they are, the redder they are. Yeah. Is that what the chart showing us? Generally, these are main sequence stars. You can have red giants, uh -huh. but that's that's a star doing a crazy death thing. Okay. But a regular star in its regular lifespan, you a uh, star with just a little bit of mass is very red and very small. Uh, more mass. It's more orangey and bigger and brighter, and our sun is yellow, generally, and it's big and bright, and then you have stars that are whiter and bigger and whiter and then white and bluish, and they get really huge. So, from the, <clears throat> when we're looking at them with the telescope, they actually look red and orange mm -hmm. yeah. and all the, I don't see those colors. Okay, uh, the next time there's a clear night, uh, okay. look for Orion's belt, Okay. you know where that is. Mm -hmm. So you'll see Orion's belt over here, and you see the three stars of the Orion's belt. And then you look over a little bit, and you'll see this little kind of a triangle and little cluster of stars. All right. And the little triangle is uh, Taurus, the bull. And one of those stars is very pink. It's very pinky red. Because it's very small? It's a, no, it's a red giant. Because it's dense. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, uh, uh, okay. I think it's three or 400 light years away, but it's a, it's a red giant. And what happens is a regular star like ours, when it gets near the end of its lifespan, oh, it, burns out. it well, yeah. it starts doing this pulsing thing. It pulses. Ooh. Is yeah, ours pulsing yet? Not yet. Well, Thank goodness. In about four billion years, it'll start oh, okay, to do that. We're good. Well, it starts to cool down because it's running out of fuel, uh -huh. and it starts to cool down, and then it collapses, wow. oh. and then that adds compression, and it heats back up. And it expands, and then it cools, and then it starts to crunch. But it will more. eventually dissipate. Well, it, uh, large stars, stars mm -hmm. with a bigger mass than uh -huh. ours, will slowly blow off outer shells of their atmospheres until all that's left is a tiny little white dwarf. What would that do to the rest of us? 
all of our planets. Well, this is like four or five billion years from now. All right, so I can just calm myself yeah. down. Yeah, you'll be okay. I worry real you'll easily, okay. Dan. You can't tell me stuff like that and expect me not to worry. Oh, yeah, it will be a long time. So okay. what I did is I brought these little beads that I bought, and they all glow in the dark, and you'll be able to... Oh, you're uh, always into glowing in the dark. I am. I love glowing I in the dark. How are we going to get these to glow in the dark in the studio? Uh, we won't be able uh, to. You didn't bring your well, light? Well, yeah, I didn't like even think about that. Like you wanted to show us about that light. Yeah, and I have some green ones, but they're no green stars. Uh, and that might be blue. Yeah, that might be oh, so blue. these are actually the colors of the stars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But we'll use these oh. and the white over there. So. So here's our sun right here, and we've got I got a little a little starry bead right there. And what I did is, when we talk about direction of the stars, at least in three dimensions, or at least when we're looking out in the sky, uh, if I'm in Germany and I say, "Hey, there's a star and it's getting brighter, or it's pulsing, or it's doing some crazy mm -hmm, thing," mm -hmm. right? And you say, "Well, where is it?" Well, I have to tell you where it is, even though I'm not there, and I can't just point at it, right? So the the way that uh, the coordinate systems, as far as locating stars go, is that there are 24 hours. We've divided the pi. If, mm -hmm. if the Earth were flat and we were in the center, then we divide every direction into 24 pi So this pieces. is common language that yep. other people use yep. all around the world. Yep. Yeah. For yeah, and it's 24 hours. And so what I did to make a three-dimensional star chart is I found a diagram with a circle with 24 divisions, and each mm -hmm. is called an hour, right? And so there. So are, you drew this, so? No, no, I found it online and just. Oh, okay. uh, I, I'm far too lazy to draw all those lines. <laughs> <laughs> so, so uh, I got. I, I got this and I made two of them, one on top and one on and the bottom. And these are pie plates, right? No, there's plastic plates I got plastic, at the dollar store. Not pie plates, I meant just plastic yeah, little plates. little plastic okay. plates. If these were clear and plexiglass, all the better. Okay. Uh, and then I went to the... So this would be inexpensive to oh, buy, cheap, cheap. to make. Yeah, this might have cost so me two plates. five bucks altogether. I already wow. had the fishing line. And the okay. beads were like uh, three or four bucks, and the plates were a dollar. These aren't fishing. Are these from a fishing no, store? No, fishing line. The beads no, are but the beads. Uh, Joanne's fabrics. We're not allowed to advertise. Well, that's where I got them. <laughs> I, I'm not telling anyone to go buy there. You can go anywhere Fine. you want. Okay. <laughs> I forget where I got this string from, but it's fishing line. It's like 50 pound test. It's mm -hmm. really thick. But, uh, the idea is that we need to be able to locate Alpha Centauri, right? Which is mm -hmm. the closest star group of stars, there's three stars, uh, to our sun. And it is in this direction over here, and we'll move this around, and I designated A Cent, which is short for Alpha Centauri. And Alpha Centauri mm -hmm. is a three star system, and it's got a star that is very much like our sun. It's a little bit bigger, a little brighter, a little wider. And then there is another star orbiting around it, which is orange. It's a little so more. So stars orbit stars. Oh yeah, yeah. The the majority, or at least half, the stars in our galaxy are pairs or triplets. You're kidding me! How come I don't know this? Uh, I should have known it. No, I'm sorry. No, you're not a major astronomer. We better edit that deep, out. Deep, deep <laughs> I didn't know. I have heard that there's other stars out there that yeah. have planets orbiting them. Yes, and but two, stars orbit two stars. of the stars, I, I set it up to be able to make 10 mm -hmm. for the program, and two of them have planets. They're not confirmed, but there's very good evidence to suggest that there is a star orbiting this smaller star that's orbiting Alpha Centauri. It's a, it's a two-star system. And then there's a tiny little red dwarf, maybe twice the size of Jupiter, Mm -hmm. That is a star, no and it's dwarf. orbiting way. Yeah. yeah, it's called a dwarf. <laughs> Our sun is called a yellow dwarf. Okay. And if you look over here, uh, what I've got is I've got the G. That's our sun. It's a G-type star. They've given the types of stars names. So our sun is a G-type star. A smaller orange one is a K-type star. Uh, even smaller is an M-type star. Those are little red dwarfs. And then they have these uh, little objects called brown dwarfs. And these are little balls of gas that didn't have enough mass Did to create kind of fusion. Okay. Oh. Yeah. See what happens? You've got this so big ball like of gas. kind of like a blob or something? Well, no. It's like a Jupiter that's really, really hot. Uh huh. But it's only hot because it's like compressed, and over time it'll cool down. 
uh, and it's called a brown dwarf because it's not really red, it's more brown, it's darker, and it's not quite a star because it's not luminous, it's not shiny. Okay. So it's one of those in-between objects, and uh, you can have a planet get up to about 70 or 80 times the mass of Jupiter, and it will be wow. a brown dwarf. But after a certain point, there's enough matter that squeezes the center of the star to about 100 million degrees, and that's about the temperature it takes for hydrogen to hit each other strong enough that they fuse together and make helium. Yes. And they give off a gamma ray, and they give off a neutrino, and they give off a little bit of heat. And when you have 100 billion of them doing that all at once, you warm the place up a little bit, mm. and your star warms up, and it glows, and it gets bright, and it gets very hot. Like ours? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, so we take, what, what we do is Alpha Centauri is uh, in a different spot. So if you want to grab a yellow one, a big yellow one, and uh, a big orange one, and a very small They look one. like they're the same size to me. Uh, there's oh, there's a big ones. one. Yeah. Got it. So you take so a big one. So you want a big yellow one? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And a big orange one. And so, so what I, I built these, uh, uh, long ago I built one that had the hundred nearest stars and it was a great big mm -hmm. contraption. Yeah. So you got this idea off YouTube? Where did you get no, this idea? No, no, I just wanted to make a model and I didn't know how and but so you got I figured the it out. you got this off. Where did you get this off the internet, right? This little chart? Well, I got. I didn't get the chart. I just got the thing, the circle divided into 24. Oh, okay. And then I need a little pink one. And then you bought the plate. Yeah. And But you thought of the rest of this yourself. Well, I had to do it geometrically. I'm not... You know, even though I love science, actually mm -hmm. a little one. You got small little oh, one said for the red one. dwarf. Because we got a, a red dwarf. Big There's your dwarf. Okay. There we go. Oopsie. So if people want to know more about you, how would they connect with you? Well, I've got an email address. An uh, email address about the 84 cheeses? 84 well, cheeses? Well, that's my email, but generally I send them to my art page. Because, you know, I paint mm -hmm. paintings and, and that sort of thing, and that's a... Because yeah. I want people to see my mm -hmm. art. I'm very proud of my art. You're an artist, so, um, <clears throat> besides a scientist. So, how would they get there? How would they get uh, there? Well, there should be a page on there with my name, but generally I've got... It's in the credits, then? Yeah, I've got... Uh, my art page is on Facebook, and it's called The Art of Danzio. <clears throat> so these little guys I'm going to squeeze together and we're going to put them right about there because it's a little lower and then what we do is I have to stick it in the corresponding hole there and it's kind of tough. How did you make those holes in the plate? Did oh I have a drill. Oh, dr <laughs> Yeah. Do we recommend that for our Children. Well, I tried using a push pin, and then if you could, oh, that would be good. If you could hold this and hold it tight. I'm going to use the glue gun and glue that down, and then we will have our first. And we're going to put other stars on this, so we're charting as many as the we stars. Have, as many as we have time for, and then we just hold that down and let that let that cool. Are we have the Big Dipper on here? No, the Big Dipper is so far away Too that far uh, away. Yeah, it doesn't... we got to have closer stars on ours. Yeah. Yeah, and these these guys are... Let go. Yeah. I don't think that... I think through. it's droopy. Okay, I won't let go then. Yeah, it's got to cool down. Okay, yeah, I got it. Just don't burn yourself. So, so, so we have this, this Alpha Centauri. And so Alpha Centauri is, uh, yeah, don't, don't burn yourself. Um, uh, it's got two stars that are orbiting close to each other, and this little orange one orbits at the distance of Neptune, and then it swings in closer to Saturn's orbit, and then it swings wow. out and swings in and swings out, and it does a little wobble. Something's making it wobble, and they have some good evidence. So this is a near Saturn. Is so this is in our, in no, our no, solar system? No, no, no. It's the same orbit as. Oh, the same orbit as. Yeah, as close as. Yeah. Or as far as. But this is much farther away. Yeah, that'll dry. 
So that's Alpha Centauri, and it's right that's about there. That's fascinating to me that stars yeah. rotate around stars. <clears throat> so, so to locate a star, if mm -hmm. I'm in Germany and I'm trying to tell you where to look for a mm -hmm. star, I would tell you to look at uh, 10 hours, 49 minutes, and 57, uh, 15 seconds, and minus 53 degrees. Well, why does it say 14 on here? Well, I've got, uh, I would, you'd look at 14 hour, and that would be that direction in the sky. Okay. And then I would say minus 62 degrees, and so it's that, that way. Okay, because, so it puts because you right if in the, there. If the, if the Earth were right in the middle, the mm -hmm. equator would be in the middle, and anyone on there would be able to look in the distance, and they would look at the angle. And uh, Alpha Centauri is actually, yeah, minus 62. So, so be every able to, star has like a, a designation. Yeah, a coordinate. Cool. I was going to say a coordinate. Every yeah. star has a coordinate. So wow. it is somewhere this way, and oh, this, this. What do we want? Oh, oh. We're I getting get rid of that. No. Oh, no, we're so you can oh, focus this thank on this. you. Yeah. Thank you very much, Jim. Yeah. So, and Tom. So what I did. There you go. Is I did explain it. Yeah, that's pretty bright, isn't it? Yeah, we needed a yellow piece. Okay, of let me thing. show you this other thing that I did, and uh, I'll show you this. So what I did is I worked out. Uh, in this case, uh, let's say uh, here. This one's easy to see. Lalande. Okay. And Lalande is uh, if our sun were right here. Uh, it would be in this direction, and it's this far, mm -hmm. right? And so I made a simple right triangle, and I could figure out how far in this direction I need to go, and then how far up or down I need to go. Wow. And it's a it's a standard right triangle. And uh, I didn't have any. Uh, I found later I found guides and books on how to make your own three dimensional star chart, but I couldn't oh, find any. so other time. people thought about mm -hmm. that. Too. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So these great minds are all thinking about this at the same time. Oh yeah. Well, the idea, if you're a space traveler and you're <laughs> you're traveling through space, uh, you want to be able to find this star or that star. And if you're on this star and you want to go to another one, you want to have a sense of how far away uh -huh. it is. And with a three-dimensional star chart, you can ca calculate the distance. Like okay. it might be five light years to this star and seven light years to this star, but it's a little farther or a little closer if you're coming from our our star, our sun. Okay. Yeah. So, so now what are we going to do? Are the all these one, for our different stars? Yeah, I brought ten all together. We want Damn, Bernard let's get some more here. Star. Bernard Star. Where is Bernard Star? Bernard there it is. Star. Yeah, Bernard Star. Who named all these stars? Well, the in this found them? in this particular case, it was a dude named Bernard. Bernard. So you need a little pink one. A little pink one. Or you could get a little. Purple I got a little one. pink one. Oh, a purple one would be pretty. Yeah. And these are going to glow, glow in the dark. Yeah. So if a kid, if a child makes it, they turn off the lights. Yeah. What a fun thing to do. Well, you'll be able to take this home. Do you ever have space parties and birthday parties? Uh, when my kids were young, we would play glow tag. Oh. <laughs> we, would, we would put glow-in-the-dark stars all over the ceiling and walls. Yeah. And then we would, <laughs> we would uh, try and tag each other. We couldn't see anything, but the glow-in-the-dark stars kind of lit oh, up the room. Oh, so just to regular ta tag. But yeah, but it we was couldn't under see the each glow other. Tag. Yeah, we couldn't see each other, so... I only got, what do you got there? Just one? Yep. I thought we wanted a... It's a little red dwarf. That's all, all we got itself. there? Nothing's orbiting it? Nope, it's all by Gosh, itself. it's all by itself. Okay, where is it? Bernard Star is... Okay, yeah, it's right about there. Actually, it's down just a little bit. So there's no knot there to keep it there? Well, It'll stay I used the I used the okay, glue. If you could let me hold, hold that this. down. Yeah, I so got I can it. get some glue on that. And your e isn't your email? Uh, don't we have that in the credits too? Yeah. In case you have questions Dan about making one of these. Dan eight four cheeses. Dan eight four cheeses at, at Gmail. Gmail. <clears throat> what a fun family thing to do. Yeah, and and I wasn't sure how much. I wasn't sure how much of this to put together before mm -hmm. I got here because you know I really have no idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Be I careful. It's still push hot. It down, though, it's Dan. still hot though. It just I'm yeah. Trying to act you like gotta it blow doesn't on it. hurt. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta blow on it. 
we have seven minutes. Why don't you keep doing some more stars, and I'll keep okay. my fingers here. Okay, so I'll the next one is after Bernard Star, we got Lumen. And Lumen, Lumen is actually two brown dwarfs, and they discovered them quite recently. And Lumen is... I bet you have a telescope, don't you? It's on 17. Yes, I do. <laughs> Great big gigantic one. Where's Lumen? No, it's, it's a, you know, regular... Lumen, there's Lumen. It's over Little here. one from the dollar store. No, no, Telescope. no. I got oh. it. I got it at a at a you camera. You got a real deal. Camera one. place. Yeah, that's good. Okay, okay. that one tries. So I need two out. small purple ones. Okay, now. we're gonna start moving. I want these people to see what this is gonna look like. So what this star? This star? What? One more these time. These are two we'll little brown dwarfs that are orbiting each other. They're uh, buddies. Over a, a two or three year period. And buddies. Yeah, yeah, and they're very similar in size. They're oh, it very takes dim. them that long to orbit? Two yeah. years? Okay. Well, in their particular orbit, yes. And uh, some stars take years to orbit. For instance, the Big Dipper, if you look at the handle of the Big Dipper, the mm -hmm. next one in mm -hmm. has a second star orbiting around it. Can you tell that from your telescope? If, if you have uh, really binoculars powerful. or telescopes, really? you'll see it. Yeah, and in wow. fact, it's not just... Even with binoculars. Huh? Where's Lumen? Lumen. Oh, Lumen. There you are, Sue. You are... See, he's trying to be very accurate about where to place it up or down. And that is minus 53, so it's down here a little further. So it's down here. But you say they're brown. We're using purple to be brown. Well, I didn't have brown beads. <laughs> well, sure. <laughs> I, I looked around. There was a big bag of assorted beads, but I wanted to get the glow-in-the-dark ones, and I didn't want to get some glow-in-the-dark and some not glow-in-the-dark. That's how far. It's down quite a ways. That's down five. Centimeters. So, and what I did well, is I measured. Look at you measuring. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's down a little How further. old were you when you were be, got interested okay, in astronomy? Okay, you this. Uh, first grade. Younger really? than that, maybe. What yeah, before, you it? Well, before, uh, when I, before I started going to school, uh -huh. I started watching Star Trek when it originally uh -huh. came out. And uh, I just became... Enamored that young in first space. grade? Well, it was 1968, 1969. Wow. That was first grade for me. So I started doing that and watching it, and I started dreaming of traveling to the stars. Wow. And then I got into first grade. I found books on stars because uh -huh. I wanted to know what they were and wow. how they worked and everything. And I read everything I could get in the in the grade school the library, library yeah. until I started reading the same thing over and over again. And then uh -huh. I went to the the bigger, fatter books. And, and there's a lot of stuff that I didn't understand, and so I had to learn other things. Yeah. I ended up learning more about physics and chemistry. Because of Star Trek. And, because of Star and, Trek. Yeah, wow. geometry and, and uh, quantum physics. But your physics. first passion was stars. Yeah, yeah. And travel. Wow. Your artwork shows it, too. Your artwork's amazing. You well, that's me dreaming of the stars even more. Yeah, kind of. I hope they do go to your... Um, yeah. yeah, yeah. How are we doing on time? We're well, we're I think out. we're down to one minute. Oh, I'd man, I'd like to have time. more stars on my 3D star chart. Well, before, I've never heard of a 3D before you go star home, chart Yeah, before today. you go home tonight, we'll finish this, and you can take we're this with you. Yeah, and you can take it to school and show the kids. Oh, the kids, some of our cl classes are studying astronomy right now. Well, they'll have their, wow. own, their own little star chart. So they could do their own little thing on <clears> the Big Dipper, too. Just yeah. It wouldn't be as precise, but what a yeah. fun project. Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah. Uh, I, I made a large star chart, mm -hmm. 3D star chart with the 100 nearest stars, and it was big. It was really big. Oh, and it was all head. done, uh, each centimeter stars? represents a light year. Yeah. yeah. I, I, and then I did the brightest be... stars, and that was 300, and it was even bigger. It was yeah. crazy. I, I'm, I'm just And you used the same totally dimensions. Out of control. Yeah. Same pipe lights. Yeah. Well, Dan, it's been fast. It's been nice. But thank you very much. Time for sure joining flies us. when you're having fun, that's for yeah. sure. Yeah, wow, you're intriguing. So we're very lucky to have somebody here all the way from Edmonton. Mm -hmm. 
Canadian. Yeah, I'm a dual citizen, so it's like yeah. I can jump on either side of the border and I'll be okay. How cool is that? <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. Please join us again sometime on the Just Kidding Around show. We're on every Saturday, Sunday, and Wednesday night. Thank you to Jerry Gillian, Jim Elder, and Tom Dubuque. Bye. Bye to the students at South Bay and Lydia Hawk. We're going to make one of these. She's That's awesome. Cool. And he's awesome. Oh, no, she's awesome. He's awesome. No, no, she's more awesome. No, he's the <laughs>